The advances in information technology over the last 20 years have been incredible. And what is so incredible as well is how empowered we have all become. We've never had it this good when it comes to information. We are more digitally connected than ever before and in so many ways. Anyone can reach us easily now, and naturally, many do. There is a fierce daily competition for our time and attention, from work and personal interactions to attention-grabbing headlines. Information is in abundance. Many of us feel overwhelmed at times when trying to manage everyone's expectations. This constant demand on our time is leaving us with a processing deficit and contributing to the rise of stress, anxiety, depression, addiction, and attention deficit. Some researchers also suggest that we as a society are becoming desensitized. We don't have time to process all the events that find their way into our minds daily. In other words, yes, we are more connected now, but in a less meaningful way. So the big question in an attention-driven society is how do we focus when many want our time? Now, it turns out that when we focus and engage ourselves in whatever we're doing, we enjoy it more. And the opposite is true. When we disengage, we find anything we do less enjoyable, tiring, and even stressful at times. Now, in recent years, there has been a lot of controlled studies on mindfulness meditation. There's been an explosion of studies. Many of these studies demonstrated the benefits of mindfulness meditation, not only in the treatment of physical and mental health conditions, but also for everyday well-being. Now, I'm not going to review these studies with you today, but suffice to say that if mindfulness meditation was a drug, it will be today the biggest selling one. Mindfulness is about increasing our mental capacity instead of shrinking our thoughts. It's about tolerance and not resistance. It's about intentionally paying attention to each moment and being fully engaged in whatever is happening around you and within you. Our minds wander about 50% of the time. Some of this daydreaming is good for our brains. It fosters creativity and helps us find solutions to tough problems. But there are other times when we need to calm our minds down. Times of stress, anxiety, self-doubt, when we have a peak performance, and when we need to sleep. Evidence suggests that Mindfulness meditation can help people focus their attention and sustain it. It is also evident that people who practice meditation for years, like Buddhist monks, can outperform us in concentration. Now, imagine if we could all be as good as a Buddhist monk when it comes to concentration. And imagine if we can do it in a short space of time. Imagine if we can control where our thoughts wander to, like we control where our arms and legs move. These were the thoughts that were on my mind when I started looking with my colleagues for a new, effective way to help people concentrate. And in particular, people who live in nature-deprived conditions. I pictured a convenient, gamified, 
new age mind gym for those who lack the time, means, or the privilege to practice mindfulness meditation in a natural, pleasant setting. Nothing replaces being close to nature when it comes to our mental health. But nature is inaccessible to so many, and the figure is rising. Even by looking, evidence suggests, even by looking at a picture of nature, we feel a sense of calm. Now, with virtual reality and neurotech, not only can we democratize nature's experiences in a beautiful, immersive way with a strong feeling of presence, but we can also seamlessly connect the nature we created with the mind of its observer. We imagine the system that uses advanced signal processing techniques to monitor and analyze in real time the brain and other biodata, extract the relevant features that tells us the mind state of the observer, and use these features to curate the virtual environment. Technology is transformative, so we wanted to deploy it for the good. Hence, there is an irony here. We are using technology to solve some of the problems it has created. So, with a talented multidisciplinary team, and a couple of years later, let me show you how far we've come. And I'd like to show you one of the mind games we're building. This one is designed to help you concentrate, and it's set on a tropical island. The mission is to use the power of your mind to clear the heavy fog on the island. The more you concentrate, the more you see the fog clearly, allowing you to enjoy the experience. And the more you let your mind wander, the more the fog returns. Equally, if you breathe naturally and feel relaxed, you are rewarded with a feeling of weightlessness, allowing you to float over the island like a feather on a breeze. At the end of the session, you are given a score that tells you how well you concentrated and how relaxed you were when you did it. And you work on improving the score. There is a fundamental understanding in neuroscience that the, the more we train the wiring of the brain or the circuits of the brain, the stronger these circuits become. This is called neuroplasticity. What we are doing here is consistent with this understanding. Every time we alert the mind to stop wandering, we are, in essence, strengthening the focus circuits. Now, it's still early days for these devices, it's the second generation of neurofeedback, I would say, to, uh, to learn how effective they will be. But it is an exciting and uncharted journey. Many of the treatments of mental health conditions have traditionally relied on intuitive assessments and manual measurements. I truly believe with wearable technologies, we will change that, leading in the future to a more accurate and quantifiable form of measurement. Finally, let me leave you with these thoughts. Wellness is key to our growth and performance. And resilience is key to prevention. We can train ourselves to be mentally resilient. And I think in this day and age, learning how to meaningfully connect with the moment is worth the training. Thank you so much.